Welcome to the Bar Exam Toolbox podcast. Today we are talking about planning your study time. Your Bar Exam Toolbox hosts are Allison Monahan and Lee Burgess, that's me. We're here to demystify the bar exam experience so you can study effectively, stay sane, and hopefully pass and move on with your life. We're the co-creators of the Law School Toolbox, the Bar Exam Toolbox, and the career-related website Career Dicta. Allison also runs the Girl's Guide to Law School. If you enjoy the show, please leave a review on your favorite listening app and check out our sister podcast, the Law School Toolbox Podcast. If you have any questions, don't hesitate to reach out to us. You can reach us via the contact form on barexamtoolbox.com, and we'd love to hear from you. And with that, let's get started. Welcome back. Today, we're talking about setting up your daily study schedule while studying for the bar exam. So we're going to talk through what makes a successful study day, both for those working with a commercial course and those studying on their own. So let's start with um, those who are taking a full commercial course. So you typically get a list of all the stuff you need to do in a day. And I think it's becoming more and more common that you're not going to a location and watching the videos in a room together because that's everybody knows you don't get like interaction. Right. <laughs> it's just, you know, even if you're he- hearing a lecture, it's like a flat person. Yeah. No interaction, no questions. Um, and so more and more people are doing them on demand and online. So you get a list of what you're supposed to do in a day. You typically are going to listen to lectures. You might do some review assignments depending on the program. And then you're going to probably get some assignments to do some practice. So one of the main things that I hear from students is they're studying using one of these courses is that they can't get through everything on the list. And right. so the hardest thing I think a lot of people have to decide is how do you prioritize? Yeah, and I think oftentimes if we talk to people who failed and we kind of ask them how they prepare, they said, well, basically I watched a bunch of lectures. I'm not sure how effective they were. And then I didn't have enough time to practice. Right. I'm going to tell you that is not the best way to prep for the bar exam. <laughs> and You're going to you, go out on a limb there? I, yeah, I'm, I'm going to go out on a limb and I'm going to say I'm not. I think if you did all the practice and skipped the lectures, you'd probably have a much better shot at passing than vice versa. Yeah. So that would make me think. Do I really want to do these lectures, you know, first thing, highest priority every single day, which I think is kind of how people treat them because Mm -hmm. they think like, oh, these are the things that are most important. I've got to get through these and watch them. I mean, you know, if you learn by watching lectures, fine. If you don't, then you don't need to watch them. You probably got books or transcripts Mm -hmm. or something you can work from. But I think it's also just about thinking about that day. Is this really the thing that's going to get me the closest to passing? And I would argue for most people, the answer to that is no. And I think there's this idea that it's all or nothing. Like right. You have to listen to all of the lectures. Right. Even if it's a class that you callied as right. a 1L. Exactly. So let's say you didn't take wills and trusts in law school. Maybe it's a good idea to listen to the lecture on wills and trusts to just hear somebody explain some right. stuff. That might be good. But I have yeah. no problem with that. I have no problem with that. But if you got an A in evidence, there are typically like nine hours of lectures or something crazy like that for evidence. Maybe nine hours of study time is that shouldn't be used listening to lectures maybe you should be doing mbe questions on evidence or practice questions on evidence because you already know evidence do not waste time watching a video on things that you already know i think that should be like your takeaway here yeah some people are like well i'll just listen to it on double time twice as fast which again is fine if you're retaining the information the problem is that sometimes i think people speed up the lecture and then they're like oh i'm good because i'm doing it faster but are you getting anything of it and that's also still four and a half hours of your life yeah it's, you could still do four and a half hours of practice questions. And you'd probably still be better off than studying something you already know. Yeah, I think that that's, that's very true. So you have to evaluate, you know, how it's going. Are the lectures the best thing to be doing for the subject that you're studying? If so, are you going to listen to them faster if that works for you? Also, should you be doing lectures the first thing? You know, oftentimes, I know for me, I can – study and retain the most information first thing in the day well most people are fresher I mean, right that's just the way it is yeah. you're probably your brain is fresher in the morning you should probably be using that you know time where your brain is really functional to do the highest value work right drilling memorizing you know practicing testing yourself recall like all of the things that really are going to lead you to having the knowledge that you need on the exam day maybe that's how you should start your day if you feel the need to watch the hours of lectures maybe you do that at the latter part of the day instead of watching netflix you watch some evidence (laughs) lectures totally um 
I also think that it's um, important to think about how you're balancing your day. I know that, you know, like Allison and I differ a lot about when we would prefer to work. You know, right. I'm a more, I don't consider myself a morning person, but I like to work earlier in the day and you like to work later in the day. And that can be fine. If you're someone who really does their best work starting at noon, I think that's fine to a point. The problem with the bar specifically is the bar does not start at noon. Right. You have to go <laughs> early. You have to go early. And so when you're building your after your I'm sorry, when you're building your study day, I think it's wise to think about, you know, what is the best time that you work, but then also how are you going to get ready to, you know, ex- execute this exam starting first thing in the morning? Yeah, and it may be that for the first six weeks of an eight or 10 week study period, you study whenever you feel like mm-hmm. it. But then in those last few weeks, you really start to sit down first thing in the morning and do practice tests and do MBE questions because you want to be sure that you're going to be fresh and ready to go. You know, and you might even practice like, well, how do I feel if I eat different things for breakfast? And I'm doing these questions um, so that you by the time the test day arrives, you really have it dialed in for like, this is my strategy. This is my routine. I'm like up and ready to go. You know, I did my jumping jacks, whatever it is that you need to do mm-hmm. to get focused and ready that you've done that as part of your study day. The other thing I think folks um, often don't think about is what it's like to, you know, sit and study in the blocks of time that you need to take the exam. So um, I was just talking to someone who said that they had a lot of um, success doing like 45 minutes of study and 15 minutes of break. Oh, how nice for them. Which is great up to a point because you don't get to press pause in the exam button. (laughs) (laughs) You know, in the exam, you've got to sit for three hours, typically without getting up, without really doing anything else. And so you're also making sure that no matter what your commercial course um, study schedule says, that you are that you are getting used to sitting and focusing and studying for longer periods of time because it's very unsettling for a lot of people. Yeah, I think particularly the MBE is really challenging to, oh. to focus for three straight hours oh, on very, very difficult questions. Yeah. Um, you know, I mean, I think when you're studying, again, the first, you know, say month or six weeks, it's fine if you find yourself most effective with a Pomodoro technique where you study 50 minutes and you take 10 minutes to take a break, that's fine. But as you get closer to test day, you need to be doing things more under test conditions. Mm -hmm. Another thing I think people sometimes forget about, um, which we have all of our students do, is there's a big difference between doing an essay that you know what it's about. True. um, And you're like, oh, I'm supposed to be studying contracts today, so I've got these contracts questions to work on, versus just getting presented with a set of questions that you have to figure out what they're about. So you want to make sure that you've practiced that experience as well. That's true. Um, in the later parts of your prep, especially those final weeks, oftentimes your commercial courses do not give you a study schedule for those last couple of weeks. And it's your job to figure out the best way to study. I call them surprise packets in our um, in our curriculum. But if you you know, aren't working with us and you want to be surprised, you can always get somebody to just print out, you know, a past exam, like the full thing, right? and then hand it to you, <laughs> and then you have to do it. Um, I think that is a really important exercise because, yeah, I mean, when you open up a question, sometimes you're like, is this a wills and trusts question or is this a property question? I don't right. really know. You know, what law am I supposed to be applying here? Yeah, and I think one thing to be thinking about, regardless of how you're preparing, is as you move closer to test day, you just want to be getting closer and closer to those real conditions. Mm-hmm. So you know, doing three hours of MBEs under time conditions. Which seeing, is just awful. Which is terrible. Oh, it's no terrible. fun. I mean, no one wants to do Nobody it. Nobody wants to do you it. You know, writing full performance tests out, mm-hmm. doing a bunch of essays that you're not sure what they're going to be about. You know, these are things that you don't want to have happen for the first day, first time on test day. Now, I know when I was using my commercial bar review course to study, I had a moment when I realized it wasn't working for me and I had to just abandon some of their assignments. Yeah, because the re- I mean, the reality is it's not designed for you, Lee Burgess. Right. It's designed for some random hypothetical person <laughs> right. who has, you know, all the time in the world and never gets burned out or tired. And I think it is important to always be evaluating, is this working for me? Am I spending my time effectively? And if not, you know, nobody's going to come and check up on you. No, this is this is really something that you're kind of doing alone. I also think that one of the things that you want to do is maybe build into your own study schedule, whether it be weekly, whether it be a couple times a week, that you spend some time evaluating how things are going. 
Oh, because for sure. when you talk to people who've been unsuccessful for the bar, most of them will say there was a point where they realized it was going south. Right. And that point <laughs> sometimes is pretty early on. Yeah, it can be pretty early on. It can be midpoint. It can be around that, you know, for the July bar, the July freak out that happens around the 4th of July. Um, but usually people have an inkling that things are not going well, but you have to kind of take time to, um, to do that check in with yourself. Because if Let's say the feedback that you're giving yourself is, I don't have enough time to memorize the law, which is what happened to me. I was like, I'm doing all this busy work, yet I'm not actually learning any of this stuff. How am I going to execute these questions? Then I had to pivot. And it was just lucky that I pivoted early enough that I was able to memorize in the same way that I'd memorized in law school. Because I think the other thing that it's easy to do when you go into bar prep is you like forget how right. you... Suddenly it's this new world. It's like, yeah. no, you're just basically taking an exam. <laughs> right, it's an exam. <laughs> you've like, done how, did you, how did you learn the law? Like for all your other exams, especially if you've been successful in school. Like what did you do to be successful? So um, you have to create those check-ins. So I think building in those check-ins a couple times a week, you know, maybe it's a Monday and a Thursday, whatever it might be, um, are very important. Right, and I think for using tools too, for example, if you're using Adaptabar, they will actually tell you very specifically, what are you getting wrong? What are you getting right? Are your percentages of correct questions going mm -hmm. up or going down? You know, that's data. Yeah. Like that's really useful. If you are using their program and not looking at that data, I would really question why, because that is going to be the fastest way to improve if you find that, you know, in one topic area, you're getting 80% of the questions correct. Right. And in another topic area, you're getting 20%, which happens. Yep. You want to look at that 20% and say, why do I keep missing these? I mean, for me, I was like, I had a crazy professor who thought the police could do anything for the Fourth Amendment. <laughs> so literally for, you know, two weeks, I missed every single Fourth Amendment question because I thought the police could do anything. And then I later realized that's actually not true. And I had to sit down and really study that law so that I actually retrained myself. Mm -hmm. And started getting more of them right. I mean, I still probably didn't do like the best on them, but I did well enough. And mm. it was much more effective than studying something that I was already basically getting correct. Right. I think the other thing that the commercial providers do not build in are sanity breaks. Yeah, breaks, it's breaks. all the balance. It's all about a balance. So burned out studying is not effective. So you need to get away from your computer and take breaks. So you, even if your commercial study schedule says that you need to study seven days a week, I would highly recommend that you not do that, not do that. <laughs> and check in with yourself um, and make sure you're not suffering for burnout because just like folks can feel that things are starting to go south and maybe they're not learning enough or what they're spending their time on is not getting them where they need to be. I think most people recognize when they're getting burned out, but it's very hard to stop and change what you're doing. Um, it, and because you you feel like, well, but everybody said if I just did what's on my study schedule, I'm going to pass. Right. But I'd rather have you doing four hours of focused study of high value material and high value activities in a day than eight to 12 hours of not really focused, sitting and kind of idly watching videos, maybe not really doing much. Mm -hmm. That's just pointless. Yeah. I mean, study the four to five hours that you can really focus and then go take a walk or do a yoga class or do whatever you want. Yeah. You're going to be better off than eight to 12 hours of doing nothing. I think that's completely true. And I had a student um, once who she was taking the exam for her third time and she called me a few days before the test. And she's like, I'm totally burned out. I'm like crying all the time. I think all I want to do is go to yoga and go to sleep. And I was like, great, go to yoga, go to do sleep, that. do that. So she went to yoga. She slept for something like 12 hours or something that night. And then she got up the next day. She studied for a couple more days. She passed. And I bet if she had not just taken that day and been like, uncle, I've pushed myself to my limit. I need to take this time for myself. That maybe she wouldn't have been able to hold it together. And maybe she would have had a meltdown during the exam. Yeah, I mean, I remember one time I studied and I went to yoga twice a day for an entire month beforehand with an mm -hmm. unlimited pass. And the first time I took the bar, I remember getting a massage a couple of days earlier and people were sort of freaking out. And I was like, no, I need like, I need to be physically in a <laughs> decent is. state that I can actually sit in that place. We had to handwrite still, mm. you know, and that's not an easy physical thing. But I was like, this hour or two hours by the time you add in the travel time is going to be so much better for me than trying to learn like one or two more things. Mm -hmm. I think that's true. And I think, again, it's all about being the whole person. You know, you know what you need to do to be able to be present. And hey, if massages are going to get you to the bar, get you through the bar, have you be successful, have you be focused, 
sign up for as many massages as you need, you know, <laughs> find a school or find something. A school, you. Like whatever you need to do or if going to workout classes, um, you know, I was I went to this goofy workout class where I was dancing around like an idiot. Um, but afterwards, I was like, I kind of feel good after dancing around and listening yeah. to dance music for an hour. And I was thinking about how like it kind of changed my perspective on the day because I had spent time doing that. And and I think that we often don't give ourselves credit for how um, doing an activity, you know, totally separate from the work and the to do list that we have to do um, can help us be more productive. Yeah. Endorphins are a real thing. They are. All right. So what about the people who have um, maybe taken the exam before and they're sitting on their own? I think that it can be a real balance. I, it can be a real challenge to figure out what you're supposed to spend your time doing. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, on the one hand, I think it can be an advantage because you actually do have to sit down and sort of think about, OK, what worked for me last time? What didn't work for me? What do I feel like would be effective? And right. then make a plan based on that. Right. I mean, sometimes people come to us and they say, oh, well, you know, I'm just going to do the same course again. Yeah. Do you think that's going to work? Um, no, it didn't work last time. Right. So it's probably pretty unlikely if you just follow the schedule mm-hmm. they give you, it's going to work this time. Right. Miracles do happen, but they not do. that often. Yeah. Um, so, you know, you're really going to have to sit down and think about what do I need to be working on? Yeah. And one of the things that I hear over and over again is that, you know, I'm just going to spend the first month reviewing all the subjects. Right. That's terrible. That's a terrible idea. Because what you're being tested on in the exam is not just your knowledge of the law, but how that law is applied. And if you are just passively reviewing law, first of all, I could not study law for a month without no. doing any practice. I would lose my mind. Well, how do you even, I mean, my thing is always, how do you even know if you're learning anything? Right. If you're just idly watching some videos, maybe reading some books. Okay, fine. But do a practice question and see if you can actually use this information. Yeah. So I think that's a problem. I think that um, another thing that's a problem is when you just review a subject once. Mm. That's another thing that I think a lot of the commercial programs kind of do is they're like, well, these are your three days about evidence. Right. I mean, you want to be doing spaced repetition on all (laughs) of this. The only way to get this stuff into your long-term memory is to Mm -hmm. keep getting it into your short-term memory. So I think if you're thinking on your own about how to structure a study schedule, you know, you might do something like, Monday, I study evidence for three hours and I make some outlines and then maybe I do some MBE questions to kind of get it in my brain. And then maybe you switch to a different topic the next day. And then on Friday, you come back to evidence and you write some essays and you review your materials and that kind of thing. So I think staggering it like that can actually be very effective from a learning theory perspective. Mm -hmm. And you also, again, have to evaluate how best that you study. How have you retained the most information? Are you somebody that needs to hand write out your own outlines? Then that's what you should be doing during your substantive review time. Um, You know, yeah, you can buy a packet of pre-printed flashcards. But if you don't learn by doing flashcards, that's a waste of time. So you've got to think about how you retain the most information and build your study schedule around that. Um, Then think about when you, um, you know, we were just talking about this with the commercial program as well. Like, when do you study best? You know, when do or when do you memorize best? When do you retain information best? And, um, you know, balance your day that way. I think for a lot of people, as well as um, you have to think about the blocks of time, you know, we talked about that, especially if you have completely open-ended study schedule, you know, do you study best in 60-minute chunks, 90-minute chunks, three-hour chunks? You know, you have to to get to that eventual place of being able to do the three hours, but you want to set up a schedule um, to maintain focus. And if you are someone who gets accommodations or has um, – struggled with anxiety or any sort of attention deficit issue, you really have to be even more conscious about this. Because I have had students who've struggled with ADD or ADHD. And like after 60 minutes, they're just gone, right? You know, they need to do something to really clear their head. And if they don't build in a study schedule that allows them to do that, then you're just wasting the day. Yeah, and I think you've got to be thinking about how do you do that on the test, too. You know, mm-hmm. 60 minutes, and then you go for two or three minutes, and you walk, and you get some water, and you refresh right. your face, and that kind of thing. I mean, those are things that you want to be thinking about as you're studying and practicing. Yep. Um, yeah, and one of the things you said earlier, which I just want to build on, is I think when you're studying the substantive law, particularly if it's early, you've got to be thinking about how am I going to structure this information so that I can review it later, mm-hmm. you know, and not just sort of come back. I mean, you, you know this from going right. to law school, you know, right. it's like you need to outline the information or have an attack plan by elements 
So that when it comes time to, you know, review evidence two weeks from now, you're not going back to the books and sort of saying like, wait, what was hearsay again? Mm -hmm. (laughs) Yeah. I also like um, not only that idea, but tracking what are your weak areas of the law. Mm -hmm. So when you put evidence down, you should also have maybe a sticky note or something at the top saying like, my problem areas and evidence are prior bad acts. These are the rules (laughs) I need to work on memorizing. The California hearsay. exceptions versus the federal rules like whatever they might be everyone's got problem areas that are difficult to learn so when you come back to it that's what you want to start with if you come back and say i rock my hearsay exceptions so i'm just going to spend all my time doing hearsay exceptions well you're not getting yourself any closer to passing no i mean this is an overall point but you know it's actually just a total waste of time to study stuff that you already know Mm -hmm. even though it feels better yeah i think one of my favorite blog posts of all time on the bar exam toolbox is do what makes you feel uncomfortable i knew exactly which post you were going for i know i know because it's so true if you are studying and being like man i am rocking this you're not studying the right stuff no it's just it's a waste of time you already know this move on i guarantee you any person who sits for the bar there are things that they are weaker on that they do not know as well going back to our my goofy exercise class anytime you can think about it if you don't buy this like if you're trying to get into shape and you have super strong quads doing squats forever is not going to make you any more into shape No, and it's also probably going to injure you. Yeah, that's true, too. Because you're building up one muscle (laughs) at the expense of another one. Like, you've got to be balanced here. Yeah. and Same idea. You know, if you're you're perfect on Civ Pro and that's all you want to study, okay, well, you just injured the rest of your exam. Mm -hmm. (laughs) Yeah, very true. I think something that is left um, on the table a lot for people who are studying on their own is the review and evaluation of your work. Mm, Both for the multiple choice, for the essays, and for the performance test. So one of the things that we focus on in our tutoring programs, but also in our self-study program, um, where we can help develop a schedule for you if you really want some help, um, is we talk about the evaluation questions that you should use as you go through this work. Because it's not about just doing, you know, 30 MBE questions. It's about what did you get them right? Did you think you were going to get them right? Why did you get them wrong? Did you not know the law? Did you misread the question? You have to learn from these to find these themes to help focus your work. And the same thing with the essays. You know, we present you with a list of questions that you should go through to evaluate your work as you compare it to um, you know, the model answers in California or the NCBE answer sheets. And um, the same with the performance test. Without evaluation, the practice is meaningless. Yeah, because then you're just like, okay, great, I did that check, moving on. Mm -hmm. And I think sometimes, you know, a set schedule may not build in sufficient time for evaluation. Or you might think like, oh, I can just go over these MBE questions in five minutes and see which ones I got right or wrong. But it's not really that unusual that it might take you almost as long to evaluate your work Mm -hmm. as it did to do the work if you're really going to get something out of it. I think if you're studying for the UBE, you should schedule in, especially in the beginning, 60 minutes of study time to go through each essay because you basically need 30 minutes to do the essay and maybe 30 minutes to review, rewrite, review the law, you know, to learn from it. And so that's one of the ways that we build out our study schedules. We build in like no practice is complete without review time attached to it. And I think you want to do that as well. Yeah, and I think the rewrite is a massively underused opportunity as well, particularly in the beginning. If your writing is not where it needs to be, just rewrite, you know, write the essay, see how you did, and then go back and rewrite it after you've read the answer, see how you did that time. You might need to rewrite it again until basically you are able to produce essentially a copy of what the examiners tell you they are looking for. Yeah. And going back to your point about spaced repetition, I think it's also important that every time you rewrite and you write out the rules again and you do the analysis again, that's one more round. Right. It's getting in deeper in that brain. Yep. Um, other pitfalls that we see or things that you need to keep in mind, um, we've already talked about, but you've got to do practice under time conditions. So you do need to, you know, sure, you need to do 10 MBE questions and then review them, but you also need to be doing sets in 33 in an hour and, you know, 103 hours. Lee, what do you think about sometimes in the beginning, people think, oh, you know, say the essay is an MEE, it's yeah. 30 minutes, maybe I can get myself 45 minutes, or maybe I can use open notes, open books. Like at what point do people need to transition away from that? So I think open note or open book is okay in the beginning 
to a point. You know, what I always tell people that what they need to do is they first need to try to recall the information they need. Um, and then if they can't, maybe referencing your notes makes sense just so you're not consistently practicing bad law. Right. But I mean, we're talking the last month, the last th- three weeks to a month, it's got to be strict time conditions, strict closed book. Really, when you're coming back to a subject after you've done it the first time, it's got you've got to try and do it closed book. You could rewrite it after you've reviewed right. those laws and get them right, but you do have to get very comfortable with doing them under time conditions. I wouldn't say that I'd never suggest going as much as, you know, an extra 15 minutes on an M- on a UBE question or an MEE question because making up, that's like time and a half. Right. I mean, making up that much time is terrible to do because that's a lot of extra time. So let's say it's an extra five minutes, seven minutes. You can maybe shave that off over a few weeks of practice. Maybe you're dwindling it down, you know, right. seven extra minutes, then five extra minutes. But coming back from an extra 15 minutes or an extra half hour for a performance test is really hard. And I think it gives you a false sense of security um, that you're doing better than you are. I agree. I think you've got to, you know, start as close to the reality as possible mm-hmm. and then as quickly as possible get to actual reality. Because the assignment is to do the best answer possible in the time allowed, not the perfect answer. Nobody cares what the perfect answer looks like if you can't do it under the time allowed. Yeah, exactly. All right. Well, we're about out of time here. So <laughs> let's talk a little bit about people who are working and studying because this yeah. is a super difficult thing to schedule. Yeah, absolutely. You have to even be more efficient with your study schedule. So one of the big pitfalls around building your study schedule here is what you do in the evenings after work. So I really think that you need more of an hour, more than an hour of study time to get m- stuff done unless you're just going to sit down and like do a MEE question and review it. I think that's fine to do in an hour. But if you're cracking your books and really diving into the law, like an hour just goes by so fast. So you want to try and carve out a little bit of time. However, I don't like to hear, well, I'm going to do five hours of work when I get home at six and then study till 11 and then sleep and get up at five. Like that sounds not sustainable. Not sustainable. <laughs> I mean, that's just not sustainable. And your cognitive um, skills are going to start to become incredibly diminished through burnout and exhaustion. So you have to find that balance. How much can you study in the evenings without completely burning out? Last night, I was trying to work late, trying to finish this script, which I didn't get done because I realized that it was getting really bad. Yeah. yeah. No, I was trying to organize my closet. And even that was too much cognitive load. So I was just like, <laughs> I am no. exhausted. I cannot decide, yeah. you know, where to put, like how how much, how high to hang the hanger. Like I, at a certain point, you just can't. Yeah, like, at a certain point, you just walk it. away. <laughs> you just walk away. And, you know, after a good night's sleep, it's amazing what you can pull off in the morning. So that's that's one thing you want to think about. What can you really do? And how taxing is your day, t- day job? You yeah. know, some people's day jobs are not particularly taxing. Some are very taxing. So that might play into it. Um, sometimes people will want to utilize their commute. And I don't think that's a terrible thing. But you need to think about what you can do. So people who commute on public transit sometimes can like run a adaptive bar or something off of their phone right. or bring an outline mm-hmm. and read through it. Exactly. On the bus. Right. You know, so that's something you maybe want to explore to collect some additional time. Um, maybe even use your lunch hour. Maybe you can even take an extended lunch hour, you know, depending on your job. Maybe you get 90 minutes for your lunch hour and stay a little bit later, but that gives you more time to study. So you've got to get creative. But I think what you want to do is make sure that any time you're putting in, especially during the week, you're not just banking hours, that they are meaningful and they're getting you closer to your goals. And then on the weekends where you have longer practice, maybe six, eight, 10 hours of studying that that's where the magic is happening so right. that's when I think you're, you've got to, I mean you're going to do most of your substantive learning at that point yeah. so I think you can think of weekends as kind of that deep work the substantive learning practice and then during the week you've got to think strategically about what can I do if I have an hour or if I have 90 minutes you know there are things you can do that would be effective but like you said earlier probably just sitting down and trying to learn a subject area is not the best use of that time. Yeah. So you might have to experiment a little bit. Most people who are working and studying typically study for a longer period of time, um, which I am a huge fan of. So you may have a couple weeks that you can kind of test out some different schedules. Um, We oftentimes do that when we work with students who are working and studying. You know, my team will be like, let's build two weeks of a schedule. Right. We're not going to build the next four months. Right. Let's see how it goes. (laughs) See what you can get done. And then let's be realistic um, about what happens. So, again, setting up 
time to evaluate how things are going. Maybe if you're working and studying, maybe it's a Saturday morning or a Friday night before you go into the weekend, but making sure that you are doing that evaluation um, is going to be very important as yeah, well. Yeah, absolutely. You want to be basically, you have a plan and then you check to see if that plan is actually getting you closer to right. your goal. Right. And if not, change the plan. Change it's the plan. It's totally fine. No yeah. one cares how you prepare as yeah. long as you pass. One last thing though, just because you're working and studying does not mean you get out of practice under timed conditions and exam conditions. And if anything, it's still very important on those weekends to do that three hour MBE packet or that, you know, three hours of essay practice, especially as you get closer to the test, because you still have to know what that's going to feel like. So well, you have a plan going into the room. not just three, it's three plus an hour or so for lunch, well, yeah. and then another three. Well, yeah, so but if, if you, you can't do the whole day, at least do the Right, so if you can't do three, you're really going to struggle with okay, six or six, point. I mean, six and a half in the afternoon in California, which is kind of brutal. Which is pretty brutal, yeah. Well, with that, I think we are out of time. I want to take a second to remind you to check out our blog at barexamtoolbox.com, which is full of helpful tips to help you prepare and stay sane as you study for the bar exam. You can also find information on our website about our courses, tools, and one-on-one tutoring programs to support you as you study for the UBE or California bar exam. If you enjoyed this episode of the Bar Exam Toolbox podcast, please take a second to leave a review and rating on your favorite listening app. We'd really appreciate it. And be sure to subscribe so you don't miss anything. If you're still in law school, you might also like to check out our popular Law School Toolbox podcast as well. If you have any questions or comments, don't hesitate to reach out to myself or Allison at lee at barexamtoolbox.com or allison at barexamtoolbox.com, or you can always contact us via our website contact form at barexamtoolbox.com. Thanks for listening, and we'll talk soon. Thank you.